Hey everybody, and let's get started on today's project. We're gonna start with our eight x 10 gel press plate, and we're just gonna add just a little bit of clear gesso to that. We're gonna be using the gel press economy brayer just to brayer a light coating um, onto our plate. I am today using Finnebear's Art Basics Clear Gesso. It was my favorite. Um, I did a test of five different clear gessos and that's the winner. I will link that video down below so you guys can check that one out. So you can see on this plate that I had previously done a project um, that was smaller and so you can kind of see the outline where that smaller piece of paper was. It's not going to affect the quality of what we're doing um, and so it's fine. Don't worry about it. As you can see, I'm just getting a really light coat. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give a surface for my acrylic art ink to sit to. Since it's water-based, there's always a chance that it would beat up like a watercolor on my gel plate, so I wanted to give it something to grab onto. I went ahead and set that aside to let it dry and grabbed my Illustrating Bible. Now this is the second edition of the Illustrating Bible, so it has that kind of peacock green cover. The original one had a, um, a rose gold cover. So right now I am flipping through it, trying to find Proverbs 318, because that's the verse we're going to be doing today. Um, it says, she is a tree of life to those who embrace her. And I'm going to grab a pen, I believe in this one I used a Marabou uh, Fine Liner Graphics pen, just a point two in black. Um, I like to do this to begin with for two reasons. Number one, so I don't forget to do it. And also, it makes me remember where the verse is so that I don't accidentally cover it up whenever I'm going a little crazy with my mixed media and that kind of stuff. So I've done that. I have my Bible ready to to the page I need to. My plate is dry. And so now it's time to have some fun and make some cool abstract um, treats. So I'm actually using some ink that I found at Walmart of all places, but it was this really fun set by Royal Lang Langnickel. Is that how you say it? And um, it was neon color, so of course I had to buy it. They all come with droppers. And I did test this out with the droppers um, to make my flowers and stuff, but it was too thick and when I tried to press it, it just ended up in big smooshy blobs. And I didn't like that, so um, that's why I switched up and did this technique instead. And you can kind of see I'm doing something maybe a little funky right now. Um, I didn't want to waste ink that was going to fall off those droppers since I didn't need them. So I'm just putting them on my Faith Impressions border plate. Um, just to kind of have them sit there and I can mess with that and play with that leftover ink later. And so I went ahead and just had all of my paints open and I'm just gonna get to painting. What's funny is the color I'm using right now is actually purple, um, but the blue and the purple in this lighting in my studio and the bottles look the same, but you can tell once I start painting that it's actually purple. And so I'm just drawing fun and little circles and making sure I leave those brush strokes in because that's really going to add to just the fun abstract feel of what we're doing here. Um, one thing to make sure to do is I'm cleaning my brush in uh, some water and then on a baby wipe in between each color. I'm specifically doing that because I am dipping my brushes directly into the bottles. I don't want to risk, um, I don't know, is cross contamination the right word? Um, I don't know if that's the right word or not, but crossing colors, I don't know. So I went ahead and sped this part up for you guys so you don't have to sit there and just watch me paint pretty little circles. You can see I'm adding some different colors in, mixing the pinks and purples, and just, just adding some fun little different color combos here and there. And I'm, I'm, you can't see the yellow super great, but it was just fun. And I, you know, always make sure, I'm sure you guys know this, keep things in odd numbers. So you might see me at one point kind of step back for a second and be like one, two, three, and counting. Um, because the eye automatically wants to divide anything that's even, whether you mean for it to or not. So just kind of keep in mind that. And sometimes if you're wondering why something doesn't look right, or maybe try counting it and seeing if maybe you have an even number of objects and your eye might be trying to tell you that it needs something else to balance it out. So you can see I'm adding some purples and some just mixing colors and, 
And now I'm going to be a good girl and put all the lids back on my ink so that I don't accidentally knock them over and destroy everything because we've all been there and done that. So now I've grabbed my Bible. Now I did not prep these pages and that was because with this technique it basically has that built-in gesso to it so it should be fine and not to go through the page. Um, and also illustrating, oh there's my hair, sorry about that. Didn't realize I had leaned over that far into the camera space. Um, also, in case you didn't know, the illustrating Bibles are made from a thicker material than your traditional journaling Bibles, which are just more that thin Bible page. So they can actually withstand a lot of moisture and wet mediums than a regular Bible anyway. Ooh, look how pretty and funky they are. Which I know they just look like blobs right now. Oh, and so you can see, since I only used half of it, and I'm going to flip my Bible around, and I'm going to apply the other half to the other half. Now you're going to see on this side, I'm giving it a little bit more love, and that's mainly because I've got those wires on that side, that spot from the spiral binding, and I just want to make sure that I'm getting a good crisp image, since it's kind of funky up against that wire image right now. And I don't normally have a white piece of paper on the back of my plate either. Um, but since I was using such bright colors, oh yeah, look how pretty it is. Since I was using such bright colors and my background is typically brown, I just wanted to make sure you could see that really well. So that's why that white piece of paper is there and I'll take it off uh, when I'm done with this project. I'm drying things up really, really well. I had a couple of like lumpy spots. Um, I don't know what I did, weird. Um, so I just grabbed my paintbrush and just kind of swirled it around just so mainly so it would dry faster. There wasn't anything wrong with the appearance. Um, I just wanted it to dry faster so I could move on to the next thing. So I went and grabbed my little paint palette as you can see there. Apparently I'm not very organized because I can't find space for it. You don't want to see what the rest of my desk looks like. And so I'm gonna start picking and choosing um, droppers of color and use my paint palette just to keep mixing it and I sped this part up so that you don't have to sit again see there and watch me paint slow-mo and think and stop and think and stop and think so I'm just gonna use this really funky neon green as the basis for my trees and blah blah blah, blah, blah. green trees green trees and then you're gonna see me add some yellow in there and that's just gonna start building up dimension. Right now I know it looks super funky and it looks like my trees are hanging out in space. Um, they're not, or they won't be shortly. Um, I wanted to get a dark green, so I mixed my blue and my green and that's gonna start building up those shadows on the outsides of my tree which I absolutely fell in love with this color. I don't know, it's kind of like a peacocky kind of color. It's actually very similar to the color, cover of this Bible in color, so that's kind of funny. Oop, I forgot to clean my paintbrush off. Whoops, you can see my little swirl right there. So I'm just gonna keep building up colors in various places just to kind of, I don't know, find my happy place. I did realize at one point that I kind of had them kind of lollipop style where the stick wasn't really connecting to the upper part of my, uh, of my actual tree so I fixed that a little bit and then this time I'm mixing the blue and the yellow just to kind of try to make a different hue of green and I grabbed a stiff bristle brush because I want to try to give more of a, a grass texture around my trees and it's also going to cover those bases so that my trees aren't looking like they're hovering above everything. And so I'm just gonna keep playing with mixing my droppers of color over on the right and just keep um, little, I don't know. I can't tell you ratios or anything because I just was dropping stuff. But you can see I'm kind of building this little meadow uh, and just going back and forth, cleaning my brush off, adding some yellows, I'm adding some some of that green, adding some of the darker bluish green that I made. And then what I did when my brush started getting very light on paint, I went ahead and carried that up a little further just so I didn't have such a harsh finish line of my green grass. 
I kind of gave it almost like, hey, there's more grass in the background or there's more hills in the far background. And so again, it's just the same acrylic ink with just a dry brush and just kind of stamping it down, almost like you're using like with a stencil or something like that. Um, just tapping it until I kind of was happy with the highs and lows that were going on there. And to make sure that I didn't mess anything up that I liked, I went ahead and dried this layer. And what's great about these um, particular um, acrylic art inks is, is they're water resistant and they're permanent. So once that was dry, I knew I could just start adding more layers and not worry about lifting up what I had already done. So now I'm looking for something. Oh, I was like, what am I doing? So this next step, I wanted to give the illusion of a sky, but I didn't want to just paint everything. So I took my blue and I added some water to it and then I just started kind of flicking it just so I've got that blue going on in the background, which is contrasting with my green and my yellow orangey sun, which will be a sun here at some point, but it's not yet. Um, and I wanted to add, just, again, just a contrast of color. So I did the same technique with the purple. Um, I went ahead and if I got too much splatter on my sun or my trees, I just took my finger and just kind of rubbed it and it really didn't affect it. So I'm making that dark green again. Don't remember why I made that. I'm watering it down. Why am I doing that? I don't remember. Oh, I know why. Because I wanted to do the same technique to add some dark flecks into my grass with doing a different technique, so not more of like the stampy stampy. Um, so I just did the same thing, just did that flick of that dark kind of peacock green. Again, just to give some dimension. I tried to do the same technique with the yellow, but it's so light and so fluid that even once you add water to it, it really didn't matter. But I did highlight my verse with that yellow as well, just to give it a little more pop. See, you can see I'm trying with the yellow. It's not working, but that's okay. Trial and error, that's what we're here for, right? Um, again, drying this layer so that I can keep going. This particular heat gun is from Paper Studio at Hobby Lobby, and I'm pretty sure I've had it for like a decade and it's still going, so yay, way to go Hobby Lobby. All right, now it's about just adding some shadows and dimension. So you're gonna find something super funny over the next minute or two. Um, I go through like three different pins because I couldn't find my happy place. <laughs> um, I started out with the Faber-Castell Pit Artist pin in cold gray number three in, with a brush tip because I thought I wanted to keep it subtle, but then I realized it was too subtle. Um, but it's kind of nice because it adds more dimension once I add some other layers here in a little bit But you can see I'm going around my trees and going around the tops of my trees It's kind of funny whenever I read this verse. I was originally gonna do um, Just like an actual tree like a really pretty fancy tree and then I got to thinking I was like That's not really me. I'm not really a pretty fancy tree. I go. I'm more of like a Dr. Seuss crazy kind of tree and so I really wanted this page to, if I'm talking about she is a tree of life, she is me. And so I wanted the trees to really represent me. And so you can see I've added a little bit of grass with that gray just to add some texture. And here's pen number one. It is a, that uh, fine line or not fine, yeah, fine liner graphics from Marabou. Um, just playing with it, seeing if I like it, adding some scribbles. I'm starting to kind of get the look that I want, but still not falling in love with it. But you know, once you start, you kind of got to play with it and keep going because, you know. So I went looking for another pen. Couldn't find one. Maybe I'll just use this one. Maybe not. So I keep looking. I'm like, oh, well, here's a micron. Maybe I should play with the micron for a little bit. Maybe I'm looking for a different micron. Probably. So, Micron, it's a little bit thicker of one, so I'm thinking, okay, baby steps, go up to a little bit thicker one, see if I like that one. Again, playing with it, playing with it, not loving it, but trying to figure out if I like it. And apparently I'm not loving it. So, we're going to go to my staple favorite, the favorite Castell. Um, Bullet? Is that what they're called? I think they're called bullet tip. They're the pointy ones. 
Um, but what I love about this, number one, it is India ink, so it's going to be permanent. But what's great is, while it's still wet, which it does dry fast, I can drag my finger across it, um, and it softens that line so it's not such a harsh line. So you see that I'm getting the outline, but then I'm smudging it so it almost ends up with a little bit of a shadow behind it as well. So two birds, one stone. And so I'm just playing with that. I'm adding my... I'm adding all the lines in the middle and the lines on the outside. I'm just playing with it. And then, nope, still more in the middle. Gotta add a little bit more. Gotta keep those little fluffies in the middle. And then I start doing the same to the trees and that's when the whole image really starts popping because you can see I'm drawing my trees down so they look like they're growing out of the ground now instead of floating and they have dimension and they have a beginning and an end. Um, and I like how almost unintentionally I made them kind of overlap and I thought that turned out pretty cool. Again, just adding some more shadows and dimensions to make sure that things are popping. Apparently I'm thinking right here. Thinking, thinking. So they kind of look like lollipop trees. So now I'm going to turn that one little guy up there into a sun and just give him some funky little points. Um, they don't have to be perfect. I'm like, it's fine. It's a sun. So I'm just adding some funky little points. And then I am going to go back in with that gray just to soften up my black lines a little bit um, and just add just a smidge of dimension and texture to my little sun up there. And he's so cute, right? And then I'm just adding a little bit of that yellow in the middle just to make those pop just a little bit more. And then this is, of all things, it is a, a correction pin from the Dollar Tree. Um, but it's perfect for just adding those little hints of white to your projects. Um, and it costs a dollar. So, <coughs> excuse me little budget crafting tip. In fact, I saw it on another blog, another video, and I apologize, I can't remember, but it was like five, five art hacks um, for um, broke college artists or something like that. Um, so Google that, I guess, to find it. Um, so I'm adding it also to the middle of my trees, again, just to give it a little bit of highlight and make that um, just stand out a little bit more and make my contrast even more. I'm practicing my title. Always practice before you write on your finished product. And so I did happy little tree, little little nod to Bob Ross, but I also wanted it to represent me because in this I'm the tree. And so I wanted to always remember to be a happy little tree and march to the beat of my own drummer. And that's kind of what this is all about. I could have done a regular tree, but I'm not a regular person. And so that is why I chose to do it this way and just have my reminder of being a happy little tree. And also remember to always date your projects so that you remember how far you've come artistically and how far you've come spiritually. And so I hope you enjoyed today's project and I will see you guys next time.